Hello again guys, Gazio back again here. It is 9.22 a.m. and today we're going to be taking a look at um, 1.2 weapons and artifacts and all that other fancy stuff. Uh, specifically the team aspects of the games because we already know pretty much about the zero climate stuff. Uh, there's a whole bunch of other YouTubers that cover this. I don't want to give you guys the same details. So personally, I, I like to talk about weapons and team building and, and all that other stuff to make your team stronger. Uh, that's kind of what my channel is revolving around, what I want to try to work on. So, without further ado, we're going to be taking a look at the new Catalyst weapon, as well as Festering Desire. It still hasn't had its confirmed um, data. We're going to just make some assumptions or speculations if this were to be the case. First things first, everything's down in the description if you don't want to watch all the forums and details. First off, let's look at the Frostbearer. This is the new Catalyst weapon, which I think is going to be really, really nice to play with some characters. This has a attack, main stat, base attack of 42, has Frost Burial as its special effect. Hitting a normal attack or a charge attack has a 60% chance of forming and dropping a Ever Frost Ice Crystal above them, dealing 80% AoE attack damage. Enemies affected by Cryo, dealt 200% attack damage can occur once every 10 seconds. Now this would probably be good on an Ice person. The only issue is <laughs> there is no Ice people here. So what I'm thinking with builds specifically is that you can run this with Klee. You can have, say, maybe Kai or Chan Yun. Honestly, as long as you apply Frost, it doesn't matter even if it is a support. Because again, you are getting that melt. Melt damage is pretty good if you do run it with Klee. Maybe a little bit of Sucrose, Ningguang, and Lisa. I think you could run it on them. But I just really think this would be good on Klee if you don't already have a weapon for her. So yeah, good fire, ice, or just an ice catalyst weapon that would help do a little bit of extra damage. Now to get this weapon, it's pretty simple. There is this tree called the Frost Bearing Tree, and while you're traveling through Dragon Spine, you stumble upon crystalline crimson agates, and you use these and then you put in the tree or whatever, and you get some rewards, blah 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 blah. Once you get to level 10, you get the weapon for free. Here's all the other rewards if you want to take a look. So yeah, pretty nice, easy F2P catalyst if you guys are F2P, no summoning required. As for enhancements, I'm not sure how this is going to work. Maybe they might have it in the banner. Maybe it's craftable once you get it. Uh, who knows what can happen. It would be kind of cool. As for Festering Desire, it increases your elemental skill damage by 16% and elemental skill crit rate by 6. Could refine it. I'm just going to go off of a refinement level 1 because I'm not sure how you can get multiple. The way you get it is during the event, I think you get it for free. Yeah, here it is. The Chalk Prince and the Dragon Story line to obtain event exclusive sword festering desire so again another f2p weapon uh, i think these are going to be really good it has that energy recharge base attack 42 like quite literally you can run festering desire on all of these characters except for like what kaching or something like most of these guys they're they can be used as sub dps or utility or whatever don't necessarily benefit from normal attacks except for like chi chi and kaching so just having festering desire on them directly increases their damage directly increases the crit rate and all that other fancy stuff, like having Bennett, Jean, or Kaya, just using their E, popping them in, pop the elemental reaction, and then as well as getting the extra energy recharge so they get their ult faster. Same thing with Jin-Q, you can use it on him, but I, I still think Sacrificial Sword is better on him just so you can get that proc on his E because this E does have quite the hefty cooldown. Again, personal preference for Jin Chu. I think this is a very useful utility weapon, sub DPS weapon. Let me know who you're gonna put that on. And since we're only using them for their elemental skill, and we're not buffing any base attack or anything like that, this would be pretty much a good optimal weapon to use. So yeah, these F2P weapons, they're definitely something to take a look at. Level 80, around 42% energy recharge, and for the Frost Bear. Level 80, it's going to be 37% increased attack. Now, if you guys want to prepare for these weapons, I have the essential materials on your screen. I made them a little bigger just for you guys to see it. Same thing with the Frost Bear. As for the other two weapons, they are going to be crafted. The spear is going to be crafted and the sword. I think you find it or you fight a boss. Uh, let's see. Completing quests and commissions directly from the Dragon Spine event. We have some details on these two weapons. The details are not confirmed but they are in the game because they are mentioned in the stream. Uh, the Dragon Spine Spear... Oh, it also has a Frost Burial ability, so... Okay, yeah, this would be good on more Ice people, or people that are affected by Ice. If you have one on your team, this builds physical damage. Oh, I'm assuming this is the recipe. Northland, Polearm, Silver Star, and Dragon Tooth, and however you get these items. Um, I'm pretty sure you get a free Polearm in the shop. At level 8, so you get that before the weapon. Forgot to mention there is the crown to get your level 10 talent, so you can get another level 10 if you wanted to. 
Here are the upgrade materials. As for who this would be good on, let's see, for physical damage. Well, I mean, <laughs> we only have Zhang Ling and Zhang Li, so um, probably Zhang Li. Oh, actually, yeah, that would be that would be pretty good on Zhang Li if you have her as a DPS Zhang Ling, and then you could pop the freeze on another character, and then get the melt, and then just do that extra 200% attack damage with the AOE. Until we get another polearm character, our only other option is Zhangling. As for the Snow Tomb Star Silver, this also has Frost Burial, physical damage. These three weapons, the Frost Bear, Dragon Spine Spear, and the Snow Tomb Star Silver, have the same stats and all. It's just one of them has attack because there's no physical damage with catalysts. So, same thing. I think this would be good on Chan Yun. This is a good Chan Yun specific weapon. Uh, you can put this on other characters as well, if you don't have a weapon already. I know some characters have better weapons than this. This is just a good filler slot if you don't have one. Not too sure who it would be best in the slot with, but again, I do think Chanyan would work really good with this because he does put the freeze, and it's always going to have that 200% damage instead of the 80. But yeah, with the new 1.2 Dragon Spine, I'm getting really excited for some of these new weapons. Uh, with the new artifacts and all that other stuff I forgot to mention, we have the Blizzard Strayer and the Heart of Death set. These are just juicy, juicy artifacts with the cryo damage and the hydro damage, the usual. And we have with the 4-piece Blizzard, increase your crit rate by 20% when enemies are affected by cryo and increase by additional 20 when they're frozen. Like honestly, extra 40% flat crit rate when they're when you're fighting a frozen enemy, uh, that's just amazing. You can just focus on crit damage if you have a Chanyun, have a Hydro water team, have Chanyun, maybe even Child, put them on a freeze and then just good, just good. And this doesn't even have to be directly on an ice person. If you, if you really want to and go a little wild with a creative build, you can put the four piece on, say, a main DPS, like a, I don't know, Kaching, and then have Chanyun's field and just don't use Kaching's E and then <laughs> just have that cryo damage increase. And then you just focus literally everything on crit damage. It's kind of a meme build, but, uh, you know, it could get pretty crazy and creative with how things could be built. With the Hydro set, this is lit. might as well just call it, you know, Tartaglia said because because what other character needs their normal attack increased when they use their elemental skill like specifically Hydro here Let's take a look like really we're not gonna use a DPS Mona. We're not gonna use DPS Jing Q. I mean maybe Jing Q, but I don't know He's mainly a sub DPS with his ultimate and his E Mona I, I don't know, but you know, it's kind of catered to this man specifically. I mean he really didn't have a set I, I, I'm running Noblis and troop on him because I, I I don't know what else to run and I had good rolls But this literally is just gonna override the entire set for him. So yeah, increase normal attack pretty good pretty good In conclusion these three weapons have the same effect frost burial every 10 seconds do some damage, AoE damage, if they're frozen, do more damage. And with the Festering Desire, you get that 16% increased elemental damage and 6% crit rate on your elemental skills. With these three weapons though, with the Frost Burial Special Passive, as long as you have an Ice person on your team and you're affecting them with Cryo, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter who you put this on. Maybe your main DPS because it's directly increased by your attack percent. If you don't have a Claymore or you don't want to use Prototype Aminus or... I don't know, for whatever reason, you could pop this on, what, your Diluc or your Razor. I think it's good on Chanyun just because Chanyun has the Cryo, so you're always going to proc it. As for the Dragon Spine, I think our only option currently is Zhengling. I mean, it's good for the Melt. And for Frost Bear, again, I think Klee is kind of the only option with this. Klee, Ningguang. All of these are F2P weapons. You don't have to summon for them. Everybody can get this as soon as 1.2 comes out. If you complete all the story missions and you know the crafting stuff depending on what item you want to get i know i'm excited for 1.2 hopefully you guys are as well these new weapons and all this other stuff comes with a lot more creativity and builds to make with different characters as well as all the new features again all the links are down in the description if you want to see for yourself thank you guys for watching hit that like button down below hopefully you enjoyed the video and i'll see you guys in the next one peace